my friends. Um, and the problem is not that I don't want to be with my friends. I, I love you know, the socializing. The hallway track is the best part of any con. But the, and, and I came to the realization that I am a snob. Um, I'm a food snob. And um, so rather than um, have to suffer anymore, I'm going to bring you all up to my level. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, really, what, what, um, it, when I, I began to research this talk, I began to understand that the reason I'm the way I am is because I was programmed that way. In my defense, my parents are both food snobs. My care packages as a child um, at summer camp and when I went away to college consisted of um, Zabar's bagels, um, Murray's cream cheese, and smoked salmon. Yes. Um, I got um, oh pff, scones with um, with clotted cream from England. I got um, figs with prosciutto to wrap around them. Other people got chips and and cookies and and stuff like that. And 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 this is what my parents sent me. Um, and everybody's parents embarrass you as a child. But some of my most embarrassing moments, have you ever had them have to hold a plane for you while your mother explains in detail where she got the tortillas she's smuggling four suitcases of? Um, <laughs> my childhood was wasted um, going, um, trying to find the perfect New York meatball sandwich in California and the perfect Mexican food in Manhattan. So, um, <laughs> so, I spent a lot of time thinking about, about the whys, and I came across the most interesting book. Um, there's a, a, a man named David Kessler. He was head of the FDA for seven years under Clinton, and he has trouble controlling what he eats. And so he decided to research, come on up guys, because there are, there are bags on the chairs for you to have. Um, okay, and, um, and when he decided that he was going to, I need to walk around and it's hard to, to pace because this is taped on. Um, when he decided that he, that, that he needed to figure out why he was compulsively addicted to certain kinds of foods, he began looking into, into the whole um, science behind food. And he discovered, much to his surprise, it led him not only to neuroscientists, but to um, flavor makers in the FDA and to, um, to people like Furminich, whose only job it is, is to come up with fake chemical flavors of things. And, and his research led, led him to, to um, write a book about it, which is called The End of Overeating, and I strongly recommend it to you. Um, it's, it, now, mind you, it's, it's, it's written for, for public consumption, so it's an easy read. It's, it's kind of dumbed down, but it's meticulously documented. And if you want to re read the actual papers that are published on PubMed, um, it's all in the back. So you can get, get the science that's on this. So um, what you're going to get today, um, first we're going to talk about this whole neuroscience and how your brain is wired and how the food industry in particular is rewiring your brain. And then we're going to experiment with some things, not so that you can find out what I think about them, but so that you guys can, can, dis can understand what it is you are tasting from your own personal perspective. I don't know how your brain's wired. I don't know. Um, what it is you think about things when you taste them, but this will at least allow you to take the time to think about it. Um, so the experiments we are, we're go the first thing we're going to do is, is in each of your bags are four pieces of chocolate labeled one, two, three, and four. And they are from, from um, four single plantation chocolates. That means that every cocoa bean in, in that particular piece of chocolate came from one plantation in one part of the world. Um, they are either from Michelle Cuisel or Valrona, which are two of my favorite chocolatiers. And on your sheet of paper are a list of flavor notes. We're going to have a contest to see if, if you can taste the things that the experts think that they're tasting. And whoever comes close, I have prizes. Um, the second experiment we're going to run is, for those of you that, that um, um, drink alcohol, there is a, um, there's a particular um, French wine. It is their version of port. It's a Grenache grapes. It's kind of meh. It's not a creamy, tawny port with a smoky aftertaste that you know and love. This is, there's no real reason to drink this until you pair it with either chocolate or cheese. And f when I do food tastings and I want to show people why you pair a food with a particular wine, this is the best example I know of. So, that's what, so we're going to try that. 
And then the third, third experiment we're going to run today is in each of your bags is also a tablet of miracle fruit. Miracle fruit is a Japanese berry. And in tablet form, it's, it's highly concentrated. What it does is block your, your ability to taste sour. Um, so you, um, so we're just gonna mess around. I, I bought a, ho a whole bunch of things. Um, we got lemons and limes. We have salsa. We have M&Ms and, and, um, and uh, di what, cucumbers and a few other things. Just so that you can, the, the last experiment is just so you can mess around. Um, but it will affect you for a while. Okay, so let's talk about the science first. This is not true. There is no place on your tongue that is just for bitter, just for sour, just for salt, and just for sweet. Every, every taste bud on your tongue is actually a set of receptors for all of them. It's just that there are some more concentrated in certain areas than others. Um, what you really taste with is your brain. Um, and particularly um, with the See, the cool thing about this is that your body is an electrochemical machine. And it, taste is one of its hackable interfaces. And once you understand that, you can mess with it any way you want to. So, so this is that book I was talking about by Kessler, The End of Overeating. I, I strongly recommend you get it. Um, what Kessler found when he visited food scientists, he took, he took with him a um, copy of the Chili's menu. And had one of the food scientists go through some of the appetizers and some of, of the um, main courses. And what he found was that each appetizer and each main course is set up with fat, salt, sugar, fat, salt, sugar, sugar, fat, sugar, fat, sugar, salt, salt, salt. Um, vari variations of that, but all in particular proportions. The food is also pre-processed. It's not cooked. At any chain restaurant, any fast, re fast food restaurant, um, and, and these are you know, the top of the line chain restaurants as well. Your food is not cooked at the restaurant. Your food is pre-prepared in a factory. It is pre-digested for you. For example, if you order something like a chicken, chicken breast, the food is, um, the chicken breast is put inside of, of a tumbler where it is tumbled with, um, with whatever um, they, f liquid they want to inject it with, whatever oil and flavorings. And, and um, um, those of you who are in the back, you need to come up and get bags and, and oh good, Render's handing them out, um, with the stuff you're going to taste. Um, and it, that's done for two reasons. First, it takes a piece, a crappy piece of meat, and it makes you feel like it's better, be, it's moister, and it's fresher, and it's whatever because they've injected um, oils in it to plump it up, they um, and liquids and and um, marinades and things like that. But it's also softened so that it is pre-chewed, it's such that when you eat it, you eat it faster, you and you don't even realize it. How many of you go, go out to eat and eat much more than you think you're going to? You order a plate of appetizer uh, or something, and it's gone before you're aware that, it's, that, it, that you've eaten it. And then you order a main course, and the main course comes, and it's, it's a lot of food, and you polish it all off without thinking about it. Um, this is calculated. They're doing this on purpose. And the other thing that Kessler found out is it's not just the restaurants that are doing it. It's your grocery stores. If you walk into a normal supermarket today, and you look on the shelves, even if there are hundreds of products, um, with the exception of very specialized grocery stores, those hundreds of products come from five manufacturers only. No matter whose name is on the product, they're from five manufacturers. And so if you buy a packaged mix of something you're going to make at home, if you buy a canned spaghetti sauce or a, a bottled jar of something that you're going to add, um, if you're not carefully looking at the label, chances are you're getting a particular mixture of sugar, salt, and fat. So these, what, what's happened and what they've discovered is that, um, and they did this with very interesting experiments with rats, which I'll get to in a second, but what they've discovered is that the brain has what they call certain bliss or saturation points. And those, those points depend on a percentage or a ratio of fat to sugar and fat to salt. And when it's right, you can't stop eating it. Have you ever uh, um, opened a bag of Doritos? And <laughs> um, so, so what this does is, um, is 